Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we are doing a video that was requested by a friend for how to calculate Spearman's rank. So this is a statistical um, based calculation that you may get asked in your A-level exam. It's one of the three main statistical tests that you will need to know how to do, the other two being um, standard deviation and chi-squared, but mainly Spearman's and chi-squared will be the ones that come up in, in your exam and you will need to know how to calculate them because instead of your six mark data response questions that you've previously answered, I'll leave a link to the, uh, the six mark data response one, they could instead give you um, the need to calculate the Spearman's or the chi-squared value and then you would need to interpret that for your six mark data response question instead for one of your sections. So I just thought I'd give us all a brief guide from a geographer's perspective uh, a much more simplified version for how to calculate it rather than having to do it the mathematical way which for A-level mathematicians might find easier but I know for somebody who's not mathsy who doesn't know maths at all I know this is a much easier way to do it. So please remember to like, comment, subscribe onto the channel and follow my Instagram at Jamie the Geographer where I'm more than happy to send you any of these powerpoints if you wish for them. Subscribe for the comments, uh, comment if you have any things that you would like for me to cover. I've got a plan set but I'm just going to keep working through unless somebody says all oh, that would be really useful and please like because that really helps to spread the word out and we can keep doing more of these videos. So let's get a move on. So what is Spearman's rank? So basically it looks a bit complicated on the graph I've given there but basically it's known as Spearman's correlation coefficient. So if we break that down Correlation, as we know, is basically a relationship, a pattern that we've done maybe in GCC's biology, chemistry, uh, general science, that's the most kind of thing, where it shows you if it's a positive or a negative value. If it's a positive correlation, it's going up. If it was a negative, it was going down. So that's giving us the first bit. It assesses how strong the relationship is between two variables. So what I mean by two variables are two things that you're testing against on the graph. And when it does that, Basically, it's the probability, this test basically assesses the probability whether the relationship you found on your graph is actually a relationship or if your results have occurred by chance, meaning that there is unlikely to be a relationship between those two values. Now, when we have a perfect correlation, that means it's perfect. There is a definitive, clear, strong relationship between the two. And when there is a perfect correlation in Spearman's, the value will be either minus one or plus one. Now, I'll explain a bit more about what minus and plus one will mean for now, but I won't go into detail of it because we don't need to know it. You just need to understand what that means when you've given that value. So what do we mean by correlation then? Let's break it down. So we've got, like I said, a positive correlation, which is when everything goes up as one variable increases, so does the other. So the points lie close in a straight line. It shows a positive gradient. So keep again, we're going up, we're going that way. This positive correlation shows that as variable x increases, the one on the horizontal, the flat line, as that increases, so is the variable on the vertical line, the y-axis. This is what we would call, in the graph I've shown you here, a perfect positive correlation, as it's a strong, definitive, straight line up there. And this would have a figure of plus 1 for Spearman's positive perfect, which means it's definitely 100% a clear, strong relationship. But then we've got to contrast this where we have a negative correlation. This is where the points again lie close to the straight line, but the gradient is negative. This is when it's sloping downwards, downwards, and then that means there that as the one on the flat horizontal line increases, on the vertical line, the y-axis, that variable will decrease. And that's what we call on this line a perfect negative correlation. This figure would have minus one for Spearman's rank because it's a definitive strong relationship that as one variable is increasing, the other one will decrease. And then finally, we've got ones that would have no correlation. There is no pattern between the points. There is going to be no gradient. It will be zero. As there is no correlation on the graph, it suggests that there's no relationship between the two variables. So an example of that would be um, your hair colour, the, um, the, the, the lightness of your hair colour and maybe your ability to enjoy the taste of coffee. There's no relation, there's no link between your hair colour and your ability to like the taste of coffee. Whereas there is a relationship between, for example, the people who are good at maths and good at physics. Generally, those two go together. So the more if you do maths, you're likely to understand physics more, basically. That's what I'm trying to get at. If there's a relationship. So we'll go back here for the basics of a graph if that's a bit more confusing. So the x variable on the flat axis will be the variable that changes, the one that you decide to change. 
and the y variable, the one on the vertical axis, is the one that is affected by the change in the x variable. So if we give you an example of this, x is the level of plant fertilizer in a field, and y is the level of plant growth in that field. So if we look at the graph here, it shows that more plant fertilizer generally leads to an increase in plant growth. That is basically what it shows. It shows a positive correlation between that, which is basically what most um, graphs, um, data points are trying to show that there's a relationship. But what Spearman's does is assesses how strong that relationship is. So that's why I just want to give you the basics and now we're going to go into it. So how do we calculate Spearman's rank? So that was previously for plant fertilizers. Now we're going to put it in more of a geography sense. So here I've got you an example for 11 different countries, countries A through L, their GDP per capita and the life expectancy of each of those countries. Now, as we know, we're thinking geographically wise, we know normally as there is a higher GDP, normally you'll live longer in that country because you can afford maybe healthier eating, better lifestyles. But how strong is that relationship? That's what Spearman's rank tests. So normally, like I said, to calculate it, we need a question that compares two variables. Here we are, GDP per capita and your life expectancy. Now, if we can guess, if you've worked out, the GDP per capita would be the X variable because that's the one that's changing. And the life expectancy in theory is the one that is affected by your GDP per capita. So that would be Y, the Y variable. So once we have these two bits of data, this is where it's going to get a bit complicated. Both those data need an extra column right here, like I've just made here. And then those two columns, they need to be ranked. So I'm going to do it for you. So when we have this data, we need to rank each of the things in the column from highest to lowest. So the number with the highest value is given a rank of one. The second highest is given a rank of two. The third highest value is given a rank of three and so on. So I've just filled that in for us already. And you can pause the video now to have a look, but you can see here, country I has a rank of 12 because it's the 12th country. It has the lowest value of only 5,000 uh, dollars per GDP per capita in country H has a rank of one because it was the highest country in terms of GDP per capita. Note as well that is the same for their life expectancies as well where it had the highest and lowest life expectancy for H and I respectively. So that's the first step. So once you've done it you get given a column. Then what do we need to do? Once we've ranked the data we then have to calculate the difference between the two values. What's in your GDP rank and your life expectancy rank, basically. And this is known as the D or the difference value. So if I give you an example here, country A difference value is zero because five from its GDP rank minus five for its life expectancy rank. So five minus five equals zero. That's all it is. To calculate your D or difference value, it's your X rank minus your Y rank, which I should probably write down, but I forgot to, silly me. Then, once we've done that for all of them, like I've given here, the D or the difference value has been calculated. We then have a second column added after that. This is known as D or difference squared, where we square the value we've got in our D or difference column. So here, if we have a look, for example, for country B, its D squared value is four because two squared or two times two, whichever way your brain likes to think about it, is four. So then we do that all along the down column. If a number has zero, that's fine. If you've been given a negative value for your D value, that's fine as well because it will always work out to a positive or zero. Don't panic. And in the A level, this will not be as complicated as what I'm showing you because they will have filled in most of it for you, but you need to understand how this would all be done. Next, once you've calculated D squared, we add up the total. So if you look at the bottom corner on the right hand side of the table, the total is 14. So if you look from the D squared value all the way to the bottom, the total value is 14 written it there in bold. This is our key number. This is the sum of D squared. Now, if you need to pause to have a look, I'll do that, but I'm gonna move on to the next stage. This is known as Spearin's correlation coefficient. So once we've got our key number, we need to input the data, but first we need the formula. Now I know that looks scary, but we're going to break it down to what each of those numbers mean. So first, the sum of D of two of D squared, that is basically our number 14. That is the sum of D squared, 
which we've calculated to be 14. We've already done that. Brilliant. Next, n, as we've got written here, and then within the brackets, that is the number of results we have in our data. That could be the number of plant fertilizers used, the number of countries that we have in our question. That could be the number of readings of CO2 levels, the number of floods within a year, anything. But n is the number of results we've had. So since we use 12 countries, our n number is 12. And that is all there is. And then P, as in the P formula here, that might be a more um, Greek symbol, but I don't know, so we're calling it P, is called Spearman's Correlation Coefficient Value. So that is our key value that we'll want after we've calculated this. So now that we know that all the symbols are, so we've got the sum of D squared, we know what N means, we're now going to input our data. So if we look here, P equals 6 times 14 over 12 times bracket 12 squared minus 1. So I'll explain why I've done each of them. So 6, because like we have in the formula, just follow my cursor, is 6. That was already in there. The sum of d squared is 14, like we already calculated, over n, which is 12, as we calculated, bracket 12, as we already calculated, squared value minus 1, Bracket. Now I've left out the one minus because that will be used later. I don't want to confuse people. I just want to show you where the numbers are filled in at the moment. So it's 14 because our final value and 12 because of the number of countries, like I said. Next up, we then break it down even further and I'm going to simplify the formula for you. So as we showed, P equals 6 times 14 over 12 times 12 squared minus 1. If we simplify that even further, that is 1 minus, now I've included the 1 here because now we've simplified it a lot more, I think we can bring in the 1, is 1 minus 84 over 1716. Simplify that even further, that is P equals 1 minus 0 0.05, which then works out is our Spearman correlation coefficient value being 0 0.95. Now what does that mean? Like I said, we have in Spearman's, the range of your values will be either from minus one all the way to plus one. And plus one shows a perfect positive correlation, a very strong relationship. So if we've got a value of 0 0.95, that shows our data is very strong in our, there's a likelihood that there is a definitive relationship between your GDP per capita and the life expectancy of a country. So we confer that the data has an almost positive, perfect correlation. Here we go, like I said, positive correlation increasing. But there's one final step that we have to do before we can perfectly say that our data is reliable or there's a relationship between the two. And we have to compare it to something that I've given here, which is called a significance table. Now, when you do different stats tests for um, chi-squared, Mann-Whitney, um, standard deviation, each of these different tests will have a different significance table. That's because they are different values that have been calculated in different ways. But basically what a significance table does, it shows you the reliability of X and Y variables based on the number or N of values that you used in your data. So we bring it back to this idea. So like I said, N is the number of countries in this case. But we're not going to use value 12 for this one. And I'll show you why. That's where people normally get messed up when they have to compare it to the table. Basically, what this is, is if your number for Spearman's is higher than the number that you've got in your table, that shows that it hasn't occurred by chance or that there is a very low probability that your data has occurred by chance. So you can check if there is a link between your two variables by checking the probability your results have occurred by chance. This is what the significance table is used for. And to find the probability value, we need two things. Your value, in this case, our number of countries and the degrees of freedom. So our value was found at 0 0.95. Brilliant, we've already got that one. And then to calculate our degrees of freedom, or n in this case from the significance table, we do this by doing 1n minus 2, with 1n being our number of countries that we used in this case. But keep in mind, 1n, the number of countries could be the number of plant fertilizers we use, the number of readings of CO2, the number of floods in a year, it can be anything, and it will be more simplified than it's given in this question. So therefore, our degrees of freedom is 12 minus 2, which equals 10. So as we've got here in the data, it shows you that at the 0.10 significance level, 
our value of 0.5 is above the critical value and therefore our data is statistically significant. So if we look at the first one here where my cursor is, at the degrees of freedom of 10, there is a 0.10% chance that our data has occurred by chance and is therefore reliable. Now we can keep moving up the values to 0 0.05, 0 0.025, 0 0.01, to 0.005 all the way here to 0.001 and still at that significance level our value of 0.5 as we would know is higher than 0.879 therefore there is a very very good chance that this data is strongly related and it hasn't occurred by chance using the 12 countries that we've picked giving the likelihood that our data is statistically significant and that is all you have to do i know look but that's all it is so I'm just going to give you a final summary on what we said. Now, I know it looks like I've done this in a rush. Don't panic. Put it on the slow version if you need to. Nobody gets this first time, at least not a geographer. Normally, if you're an A-level mathematician, you do. I know some who don't. In your A-level exam, it won't be as complicated as I've just gone through, and I'm planning on making a video for how it will show up in your exam and what you would have to do for it. So it won't be as complicated as this. You'll be given the majority of the data in the exam. You've just got to fill in some boxes. So if you actually follow the trend in the pattern in the data in the question, you can normally work it out. But if you've seen this, it should be fine. You've given a calculator in your exam. So it's going to be easy to calculating it, provided you check the numbers. And then you're given the formula of Spearman's ranks. You don't need to remember that formula I gave you. And you'll be given the critical value table, or you'll be given the section of the table that you will need and that is all there is so if we just go back like i said our value is 0 0.095 or 0 0.95 sorry that is a strong positive correlation which shows that our data was statistically significant and that is what you would comment if you had that for your six mark data response question and that is what you have so remember don't panic it is in your a level but it won't be as complicated you're given the majority of your data, you have a calculator, and you're given the critical value table. So thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Please, again, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and follow my Instagram handle. That way, if you ask for any of the PowerPoints, if you want to go through it yourself, I'm more than happy to email them, because those won't cost you a thing. And I'm happy to give tutoring as well. I've got one person next week, which was, again, really nice to have, and it shows that it's going well. And I wish you all a brilliant time with this. And I think I'll be giving you another video tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I will see you next time. Bye.